All right, 5.2 is about congruent polygons. So our essential question, given two congruent polygons, how can you use rigid motions Your rigid motions are your rigid transformations, so the things that don't change the size or shape. So that's like a reflection, a translation, or yeah, translation and rotation, okay? Uh, to map one polygon to the other. All right, identifying and using corresponding parts. So this is really how we're going to figure this out. Congruent polygons will have corresponding parts that are also congruent. Okay, so let's read this. Recall that two geometric figures are congruent if and only if a rigid motion, a transformation, for example, um, like a translation, reflection, or rotation, or a composition of rigid motion, so all of them together, that's what a composition is, uh, maps one of the figures onto the other. A rigid motion maps each part of a figure to a corresponding part of its image. Because rigid motions preserve length and angle measure, corresponding parts of congruent figures are congruent. That's the most important part here. Corresponding parts of congruent figures are congruent. For example, corresponding angles are going to be congruent in congruent polygons. Corresponding sides are going to be congruent in congruent polygons. So in congruent polygons, this means that corresponding sides and corresponding angles are congruent. So that's very important. So when triangle DEF is the image of triangle ABC, after a rigid motion or a composition of rigid motions, you can write congruent statements for the corresponding angles and the corresponding sides. So for example, here, okay, well, they're not completely lined up, right? But I know that angle A is congruent to angle D. So if I were to do some type of transformation here to get this triangle on top of that triangle, A and D better be on top of each other. C is congruent to angle F. So once again, those better line up when I, if I were to map this on top of it. So angle A is congruent to angle D, angle B is congruent to angle E. So basically every single corresponding, every single pair of corresponding angles are going to be congruent. B to E, C to F, A to D. And I know that because of the arcs here. Okay, and then the same with corresponding sides. So segment AB is congruent to segment DE. And I know that because they both have two tick marks. So if I were to map this onto this one, AB better fall on top of uh, segment DE. And so on and so forth, okay? So you're going to have all corresponding angles congruent. You're going to have all corresponding sides congruent. And then you can also write um, a congruent statement. So when you write a congruent statement, for two polygons, always list the corresponding vertices in the exact same order. Very important. You can write congruent statements in more than one way. And here's two possible congruent statements for these triangles here. So I can say triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. So D goes with A. So see how A and D are first? And then B is congruent to E. Those are corresponding angles. So B and E should go second. And then C is congruent to F. So those are also corresponding angles. Those should go last. You can write it different ways. This, this time they did triangle BCA, congruent to triangle EFD. But notice, corresponding angles are in the same position. Those congruent angles are in the same position. Angle B is congruent to angle E. Angle B and angle E both have three arcs. They are congruent, so therefore they go first. C and F also congruent. 
those go next. Okay? All right. I think I'll stop there. All right. Let's see what else this says. When all corresponding parts of two triangles are congruent, you can show that the, con that the triangles are congruent. So you can go either way. You can say, hey, I already know that these two triangles are congruent. Therefore, all of their corresponding parts are congruent. Or you can say, well, I know that all of their corresponding parts are congruent. Therefore, I know that these two triangles are congruent. So either way works. There. All right, so example one. Write a congruent statement for the triangles. Identify all pairs of congruent corresponding parts. Okay, so let's start with um, corresponding angles. Well, I'll start with the one arcs. So angle Z is congruent to what angle in this other triangle? Angle P, right? They both have one arc. Okay, two arcs. Let's see. So we got angle Y. That'll be congruent to angle M because they both have two arcs. Okay, so then three arcs, angle X will be congruent to angle N because they both have three arcs. Okay, now let's look at corresponding sides. So I've got segment, oh, you know what, let's go with one first. Okay, one tick mark. So I've got segment XY. Now when you do this, it's important that you put the same exact or the corresponding um, vertices in the same order. So I did X, Y. I did three arcs to two arcs. Okay, so this one has two or one tick mark. I'm going to go from three arcs to two arcs just because that's how I wrote the first one. So X, Y will be congruent to segment N, M. Okay, let's go with the two tick marks now. So it doesn't matter how you start. I can start X, Z. So segment X, Z. So again, I started with the three arcs of vertex to the one arc. So I'll go three arcs to the one arc, right? So I'm putting corresponding parts in corresponding positions. So it would be segment N, P. So every time you have an X, N should be in the same position because they are congruent. They're corresponding parts. Okay, and then the last segment here will be the three tick marks. So how about I go ZY? So one to two arcs. So segment ZY is congruent to segment, and I went one to two, so one to two would be segment PM. Okay, so I did the second part first. Now I'm going to do a congruent statement. So when I do a congruent statement, it's important that I put the corresponding angles in the same position, right, because they're congruent. So I'll start with this triangle. How about I'll go X, Y, Z. Triangle X, Y, Z is congruent to triangle. Well, X is congruent to angle N, so I'll put N first. Y was congruent to angle M, so I'll put M next. And then Z was congruent to angle P, so I'll put P finally. And all of that is your answer. So we answered both parts of this. All right, so now let's use these properties. So in the diagram, we know that angle D, or sorry, that polygon, DEFG is congruent to polygon Q, M, and P, and these are quadrilaterals. So this is going to tell you a lot of information just the way that this congruent statement is written. For example, we know that angle D is, this, is congruent to angle Q. So angle D is 102 degrees. Angle Q, well, let's see, I just need to find the value of X, so that's not really going to help me. But it might help if I went ahead and just um, drew on this and got some ideas of what's congruent and what my corresponding parts are. I know that angle E is congruent to angle M. So angle E, I'll do two marks. Angle M, I'll do two marks. Angle F congruent to angle N. So how about three marks? And angle N is up here. And then G and P are also congruent, so I guess four marks. Okay, so I'll start with that one. 
and I can write an equation. I know that 84 is going to equal 3x plus 2y. Because I know that angle G and angle P are congruent based on this congruent statement. Okay, well, darn it, I got two variables here. That's going to be really hard to solve for them. So I need something that just has one variable to begin with. So let's see what else I have here. Um, I noticed that segment DE, see how I've got one and two? Well, that's the same as segment QM, right? So I know that segment DE is congruent to segment QM. So I can set up another equation that, eight, that X minus two is equal to eight. That one's going to be really easy to solve, so I'll just add 2 to both sides. I get x equals 10. So, oh, you know what? I'm going to leave it there. So this will be my a. And then I can use that now to help me solve this other equation for y. So I'll just plug that in. 84 equals 3 times 10. So I've taken this and plugged it in up there. Plus 2y. So that tells me that 84 equals 30 plus 2y. Solving this, I'll subtract 30 from both sides. So I get 54 equals 2y. Divide both sides by 2. You get y equals 27. So that's my answer to b. And that's all it asks me to do. Okay, next we're going to show that triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CDB. And this is cool. They've already marked it all up for us. So I know that angle A is congruent to angle C and so on. And I know that basically from here I didn't need them to mark it up for me, but they did. That was really cool. Okay, well, what else do I know? Hmm. I know that these two lines here are parallel. So if these two lines are parallel, then I'm going to have some... um special angle pairs that might be congruent, right? So if I think of these two lines, I'm going to turn it this way, two parallel lines being cut by a transversal, well then that makes this angle here congruent to this angle here. Okay, so I know also, besides what they've told me, I know that um, angle ADB is also congruent to angle, let's see, ADB, so ABD, oops, not C, D, and that's by alternate interior angles. Okay, what else do I know? Well, look at this. BD is the same exact thing as BD, right? They're the exact same segment. That's actually called reflexive property. Okay, so the fact that this thing is congruent to itself, I'll put three tick marks there. So I'm going to say that um, segment BD is congruent to segment BD. Uh, actually, if I look at it in, I guess you have to look at this in two different triangles. I'm going to highlight them. So we're looking at this triangle right here. And this triangle right here. So in one triangle, B is, has two tick marks, right? But in the other triangle, B has three tick marks. So you got to be careful here. So when I say segment BD is congruent to, it's not just necessarily segment BD. I mean, I won't be too picky on this, but it's truly segment DB, right? So this D corresponds with that B. And this is the reflexive property. The reflexive property says that something is equal to itself, right? Like a reflection, I look in the mirror. I see myself. And maybe I'll put a little reflexive property means um, something is equal to itself. 
whether that's a segment, an angle, it could be a number, okay? All right, let's see here. Now, in order for me to show that all of these figure that these two triangles are congruent, I have to show that all corresponding angles are congruent, and I have to show that all uh, corresponding sides are congruent. So at this point in my diagram, based on what I've been given, and based on what I added to the diagram, I now can see that all angles and all corresponding sides are in fact congruent. So I can say that triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CBD, oops, CDD, because all corresponding parts are congruent. Uh, this is a very informal proof, okay? We didn't really do proofs, okay? But this is an informal proof. I'm just marking up my diagram, explaining what I'm doing as I'm marking it up. And I'm using what was given to me to begin with. The third angles theorem. This is really obvious. Okay, so third angles theorem. If two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, like in this scenario here. So let's say, for example, oh, let's see, what can I do here? This angle 60, this angle 70, then what does angle C have to be? Well, they all have to add up to 50, or to 180, right? So this one's going to be 50 degrees. Well, this one was also 60. This one was also 70. So obviously F also has to be 50 degrees. So that's all that this is saying. Okay? Then the third angles are also congruent. So if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then the third angles are also congruent. That's all that that's saying, and that makes total sense, I hope, to you. Because it couldn't be any other way. They, at any triangle in the world, the sum of the interior angles is 180 degrees. So let's use the third angles theorem. We're going to find the measure of angle P. All right, well, angle Q is congruent to angle C because they're right angles. Angle R is congruent to... Uh, is 52 degrees because these are also congruent angles. So let's see, this one here is going to be 52 degrees. All right, well, let's see. I can find the measure of angle B, which is going to be congruent to the measure of angle P. So I can find it either way here. But basically, because these two angles are congruent to these two angles, we know that angle B and angle P are going to be the same. So I know that 52 plus 90 plus the measure of angle B or the measure of angle P, doesn't matter because they have the congruent angles, is going to have to equal 180. So I know that the measure of angle P plus 52 degrees plus 90 degrees has to equal 180. Well, the measure of angle P is equal to 1, oops, what am I doing? The measure of angle P plus 142 is equal to 180. Subtract 142 from both sides. The measure of angle P then is, I believe that's 38 degrees. So I used the triangle sum theorem there, right? I took all three angles that I, that I know or I'm looking for and added them up to 180. I knew two of the angles because over here I knew those two were congruent to these two. I could have found measure of angle B and then that would be the same thing as measure of angle P but I found measure of angle P instead. Okay, example five is proving that triangles are congruent. We're not going to do a formal proof again. We'll do similar to what we did in the previous example. Example three where we just kind of showed that they're congruent. Okay, so we're not going to get too crazy. All right, we're going to use the information in the figure to prove that two triangles, WXY and triangle ZVY, are congruent. Well, so far I can see that all corresponding sides are congruent, so that's good. And then I also see that I have two corresponding angles that are congruent, X and V. Right, and they're both right there. Well, I have to show that all the rest of the corresponding angles are congruent as well. So, let's start with something we haven't looked at in a while, vertical angles. See how this vertex right here, Y, 
creates two angles, and those angles are formed by two sets of opposite rays. That makes these vertical angles. So this angle is congruent to that angle. So I can say that um, angle, how about V, Y, Z is congruent to angle, and I'll try and go in corresponding um, order. So I started with V, so I should start with angle X. Then I went to Y, so I should go to Y next. And then I went to Z, well Z is going to be corresponding to W. Now, when you're doing these angles, it's not really important that you put them in order. It's important when you do the congruent statements. So things like this, they need to be in order. This, either way works. But we figured this out because we knew that they were vertical angles. Well, then that leaves us with Z and W also being congruent because of the third angles theorem, right? I've got now two angles in one triangle congruent to two angles in another triangle. Therefore, the third angle has to be congruent. So now I can say, okay, well, angle W must be congruent to angle Z by third angles theorem. Well, let's see now. Are all corresponding parts congruent? Yeah, I think so. I Oops, let me mark these. I'll put three tick marks for W and Z. So it looks like all angles are congruent to all angles over here. And it also looks like all sides are also congruent. So now we'll write the triangle congruence theorem. Now, if they didn't give it to you, it would be really important that when you wrote it, you use corresponding parts in the right order. So if I start with this triangle with W, then go to X, then go to Y, I should do exactly the same thing over here. So I'll start with my right angle because that corresponds. Oops, I lied. W does not correspond with V. W has three um, arcs, so I should be starting with Z. Right, so triangle Z. Then X came next. That was my right angle, so I'll put V next. And then Y came last, and that corresponds with um, the Y in the other triangle. So those two are going to be congruent now since all corresponding parts are congruent. So I'm, you know, these are like sentences, so I guess we can say, I'll put a by there, how about that? And then we can use periods, sure. I'm okay if you just list them. But you got to list them. Everything that they haven't shown you on the diagram, or they haven't told you already, you have to come up with the rest of those. Right? So I had to come up with angle Y being congruent to angle Y. These ones here. I had to come up with angle W being congruent to angle Z. And then I was finally allowed to say, yeah, now they're congruent by corresponding parts. Oh, that's it.